Stop! Don't worry about what they're doing to me, okay? You worry about what you got to do. Time! Let's get something straight right now. If you're gonna say something out here, I'm gonna put my head over here. So if you guys don't want me to come over here, then don't yell anything out that you don't want me to come over here for. All right? But don't give me this keep your head out of my dugout bullshit. So what I'm trying to do is, I'm just trying to go over there to nip it in the bud. That way I've already been over there, I've already told them to shut up. If I have to go back a second time, it's not going to be a surprise to somebody if I have to kick somebody out of the game or take care of a situation. Al, what, what about, it is, I mean, the one point you brought up, it is the first inning. Okay, it's the first inning of a game. Someone says something. Um, what if you just let it ride? What if you run it, in, I mean, now the second time they yell it out in that same inning, now you got something to say. Say, listen, it's the first inning of the game. I'm not going to listen to this all game long. Right. But by jumping right on them, with the first thing that comes out of the dugout, now all of a sudden, as it goes down the bench, oh, we got that guy at the rabbit ears behind the plate tonight. You know, and that's all of a sudden, I think sometimes you set yourself up for a long night. I agree with you, except for one thing, Terry. I had already looked over there and tried to handle it that way, but when the guy yelled out, get your head out of the dugout, that's when I had to draw a line. He challenged me. There's two theories I have on that. You can nip it in the bud and in the first inning, and if you notice on this tape, it isn't the first thing that they've said. The first thing that they've said, I looked over there and said something back. Don't worry about what they're doing to me. You worry about what you have to do. Right after I finish that sentence, the guy comes back. Hey, you just get your head out of our dugout. To me, that's a direct challenge. So I agree with Absolutely. your theory that I would have let that slide. I was going to with just a don't worry about it. I've got it handled. Because I like to acknowledge the fact that I've heard you. Don't worry about what they're doing to me, okay? You worry about what you got to do. Time! You know, Al, even in this situation right here, you know, you'll control that bench. But I don't know how many people are at the ball game right now. But you open yourself up to those you can hear them. chirpers behind the oh, yeah. plate for a long time. But don't give me this keep your head out of my dugout bullshit. Keep your head out of my fucking dugout my ass. That's I probably the got the attention <laughs> of the catcher when we'll go back with a message to his team. That's right. But I don't think he's going to listen to too much. No, today. I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> That's letting them all know that you're a little bit upset. You know. You've got it across the both but teams. But you know what? In Real actuality, quick. I wasn't really upset at them. More, I was just saying, like, you know, I can't believe I have to listen to this get your head out of my dugout, you know, stuff. Al, more than anything I, else. Absolutely. I, I was in a play one night in Baltimore. First inning, first inning of a game, I got a knuckleball pitcher on the mound, a knuckleball pitcher. And, I mean, they're tough. They're tough, as you know, they're tough to umpire. And this guy misses a real close pitch. And now you can see he is genuinely furious at himself because he missed it. And one of my players yelled something from the bench, and he exploded. Number one, he's mad at himself. Yeah. I understand that. But the first thing he said is, my goodness gracious, it's the f I went out, and he said, it's the first inning. I got a knuckleball pitcher on my. How about let me get adjusted here a little bit before exactly. we start listening to, before I need to hear anything? And I and I understand that. Here are some rules to follow when handling situations. If you draw a line, like say one more word and you're gone, you better be willing to back it up. So don't draw that line too quickly. Another rule to follow is if a manager, player, or anyone else comes out of the dugout or leaves their position to argue balls and strikes. No warning. It's an automatic ejection. In a phone conversation with umpire supervisor Pilato, we broke down some other automatic ejections. Well, there's a number of things. Uh, you know, a lot of people are under the impression, and even some of the ball players and managers are under the impression, that uh, if they don't swear at you, they can pretty much do what they want. But that's not true. Um, part of it, we'll let them have their say. Part of it is what they say, if they're going to call us names. And in the game of professional baseball, there's some, uh, there's some uh, swearing and things going on out there, but it's not that part of it. It's, it if they're going to call you a name, they're going to go. If they make physical contact with you, they're going to be ejected. And if they stay out there too long, they're going to be ejected. You know, they can only prolong that argument so long. And usually at those points, you're trying to give them warnings and saying, that's enough, that's enough, you know, if you, if any more, and you're going you're gonna to be ejected. Throwing of equipment, that that type of thing and disgust of an umpire's call will get you ejected. There's a whole number of things and that's what happened on one of the ejections. I tried to tell him that, you know, it was over, you had your say, that's enough and uh, he wanted to keep going and so a lot of times managers do that just to fire up their ball club, you know. 
But uh, in those situations, we try to give them some sort of a warning saying, hey, you know, this is a line, let's go.